skinny fat. You said it's a little bit of a contradiction of terms. Try and describe to us, how does it feel? How does it look? Being skinny fat, it's no, if, if in your clothes, you might feel skinny. And if, if you were walking down the street, no one would ever classify you as being overweight. Right. No one would say, God, you know, this guy, that girl, they're completely out of shape. But yet, when you take your top off, you just have that stubborn layer of belly fat, that stubborn fat typically around your tummy, around your waist, so you cannot shift, and you lack a lot of muscle across your entire body. Right. So you have a higher than normal amount of body fat, but then simultaneously just a lower than normal amount of muscle mass. And I'm not shaming anyone who is skinny fat. Like, this was how I lived. I understand what it's like to be skinny fat. What I also know, Mark, is that there's a lot of people out there who, who want to get out of it, who want to fix it, who want to change it. And it's absolutely possible. Therefore, and, mate, you're not, we're, we're not trying to shame anyone. We're here. We're, we're trying to help people. And, and a lot of what you said, a lot of people might resonate with. Let's first understand how do, how do we get in that situation, mate? How do we get to that situation that you've described? Yeah, so there's a, a few things here, Marcus. So seeing as we just started out with the diet, typically, Marcus, it's a low protein diet. Like when you go back to the cause of being skinny fat, it's having a lack of muscle across your body. And obviously we know that protein is one of the building blocks of actually having lean muscle tissue. Yeah. But yet a lot of people who were skinny fat markets, as I said, they're, they're not necessarily overweight. And you might analyze their day and they might say, I'm eating healthy. I'm not sure why I look this way. And technically, they may not necessarily be wrong, you know, because they might be having the porridge for breakfast with a banana. It could be soup and a bit of soda bread for lunch. OK, there might be, you know, a bar or two on, on the go there while they commute home from work. But then by the time they, the typical worker gets home and they have their dinner marks at five, six o'clock, that tends to be the only meal of the day with actually a lean source of protein, whether that's chicken, whether that's beef, steak, whatever is cooking. Mm. So they might end the day, you know, a guy 80 kilos who, who might need upwards of 150 grams of protein with just 50 grams of protein max for that full day. And yet, if you were to, you know, to be fair, that's not necessarily an unhealthy diet, but it's a low protein diet. So that's mm -hmm. probably the leading contributor. And then the second one, an excessive amount of cardio. And, and I know you're big into cardio and I've no, I, I love cardio too, Mark. I genuinely do. Um, not as much endurance work as you, but I have run a marathon before and I really do implement it into my training. But it's an excessive amount and overemphasis of cardio, cardio while neglecting strength training. That's the key. It's not that you got to cut out cardio. But when you're doing it in the absence of strength training, as we know, cardio is great for burning calories, but strength training is fantastic for building muscle. Mm -hmm. And if you lack muscle in the first point, that is where the strength and the gym work will really come in. So I would say those two things, the, pro the, um, the, the low protein diet and a lack yeah. of emphasis on actually lifting weight. 